So I've come over to Spree Park, which is in the southeast of Berlin. It's about 30 minutes drive from the city center. And my first impression is they absolutely don't want you to get in. It's totally fenced off. The park shut its gates to the public in 2001. Yeah, okay. And since then, nature has slowly reclaimed the rides and attractions. It just feels like something horrible has happened. I feel like I'm the last person left in the nuclear wasteland. Everything is falling apart in this place. And every now and again, you just get these mad sounds in the distance. So spooky. The riots haven't run for almost 20 years. But people continue to be drawn here. On windy days, uh, you have the first wheel behind us there. The, the, the wind actually turns the first wheel and makes this kind of whistling noise. It's like something from a David Lynch film. <laughs> oh man, look at this. Yeah, that's just another kind of bizarre uh, attraction here. I can see your eyes lighting up <laughs> looking at it. Yeah. Does it remind you of the first time when you came here? Yeah, I mean, first time um, was 2009 and it was just like a wonderland, really. When something is abandoned, something didn't work out, something happened. And I guess for me, I'm, I'm very interested in knowing what happened exactly, what went wrong. The park opened 50 years ago in 1969 in the communist part of Berlin. Back then, it was the VEB Kulturpark Plantewald, and up to one and a half million East Germans came here each year. But then the wall fell and travel restrictions were lifted. The park was bought, renamed, and had some new rides installed, but it struggled to keep up with its bigger, flashier competitors in the West. With Spree Park, there was this crazy story with the family involved, the Witte family, and they had to close it down. The man, the family, Norbert Witte, took some of the attractions and moved to Peru and tried to open up a fun park there. Uh, the story takes a turn when he tried to smuggle cocaine back. Wow. In one of the rides. <laughs> in the Flying Carpet was the name of this ride. From the moment I came in here first to everything that happened after that was just something, everything became more and more bizarre the more you looked into it. And this story isn't over. That's what we got here. That's one of the cars of the former rides. It was called the Monte Carlo Drive, where people could sit inside and they were pulled on a string over tracks. Mm -hmm. And we have many of these swans. There was a swan ride. This warehouse holds some of the surviving rides. It's unusual. When you see it in this context, it, it actually feels quite creepy. <laughs> The city brought back the site in 2014 and has asked Tim's company to restore it. We want to keep the park as it is in a, to a big certain extent and we want to put a new layer on top of it, something that evolves around arts and culture and the natural heritage that has developed here since the place was abandoned. A modern take on what the Spree Park used to be. Yeah, kind of. So it's not going to be an amusement park anymore, you cannot go on all the rides anymore, but we will define new uses for the rides. For example, a roller coaster could be something like a treetop tail. The Spree Park is very dear to people here in Berlin and in Germany and it holds a lot of memories. So you've got a big responsibility. It feels kind of heavy to be honest. <laughs> I mean, as you say, it's, it's really um, in the mindset, especially of people from the GDR, this is a very, very important place. That is why we want to keep the cultural and historical heritage that we found. And if you want a last look at the Spree Park before its big restoration, 
guided tours and open days are listed on the Grund Berlin website. <laughs>